Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be discussing change of subject formula and we'll be focusing our attention on the underlying principle that is the basic principle behind change of subject formula. You will come across change of subject formula in virtually all topics in mathematics and you need to understand the basic principle, the underlying principle so that Whenever you come across it in any form, in any topic, you'll be able to maneuver your way correctly. So, as you can see on the screen, a formula is a mathematical equation containing two or more letters. If, for example, we have 7y equals 9a, 7y equals 9a, this is a mathematical equation, a very simple one. If we are to make y the subject of the formula, all we need to do is to ensure our y stands alone. If you are to make a the subject of the formula, all we need to do is to make our a stand alone. But you need to understand that the sign that is in between 7 and y is multiplication. And the sign that is in between 9 and a is multiplication. As a result, if it is multiplication sign that is disturbing your subject of the formula, don't forget we say our aim is for our subject formula to stand alone. So if it is multiplication that is in between there, you have to divide it out. That is number one. If it is addition that is disturbing your subject formula, you transfer it across the equality sign and the sign will change to subtraction. If it is subtraction that is disturbing your subject formula you transfer it across the equality sign and the sign will change to addition so with this you understand better let's quickly see what we have on the screen before we go to some questions and you understand better the explanation if we have 7y equals 9a we want to make y the subject of the formula all we need to do is to divide both sides by 7 because it is multiplication that is in between them so, if we divide both sides by 7, we can now say 7, we cancel out 7. As such, our y is standing alone. 9a over 7, that will be our result because we want to make our y the subject of the formula. In the same vein, if we want to make A the subject of the formula, we just divide both sides by 9, so that 9 can cancel out. We're able to do this because it is multiplication that is in between them. Okay? Therefore, Y is the subject formula, or Y is written in terms of A, as you can see. Y is written in terms of A. In summary, change of subject formula means the rearrangement of formula so that the subject formula can stand alone. Like I said earlier, our ultimate goal is for the subject formula to do what? To stand alone. The moment the subject formula stands alone, you are good to go. So don't forget those three points we state earlier. If it is multiplication, you divide. What is disturbing your subject formula? If it is addition, you transfer. You change to subtraction. If it is subtraction, you transfer it. You change to addition. So let's get some questions done. Let's do some questions so that you understand better what we've been explaining. We have four questions here on the screen. Question number one, two, three. We have to make this x the subject of the formula. For question number four, we have to make this x the subject of the formula. So let's get down to business. So, question number one. So, let's say solution number one. Now, AX equals B plus C. We have to make X the subject of the formula. Looking at this question, for our x to stand alone, because what is disturbing our x is a, that means, and the a 
is in multiplication form with our x that means we are going to divide both the left hand side and the right hand side by a don't forget what we explained earlier so we are going to divide both sides by a so that our x can stand alone awesome so with this let's get a template that will make our job easier let's get a template here awesome so here up here at the left hand side we have ax Since we want to divide both sides by A, then our equality sign. On our right hand side, we have B plus C. And we are dividing both sides by A also. This is what we are trying to explain. So that our X can stand alone. By so doing, this A can cancel out this A. That means our x is now standing alone. So we can now say our x is now equal to what we have here. Our aim, don't forget, is for our Soviet formula to stand alone. So with this, our x is already standing alone. So we have make x the subject of this formula. Very easy. Because what is disturbing our x is in multiplication form, we have to divide it out on both sides. Let's go straight to question number 2. Great. So we can say this solution 2. Awesome. Now, we are asked to make x the subject of this formula as well. But looking at this, what is disturbing our x is b, but is in addition form. Don't forget our explanation earlier on. So, since it is in addition form, we have to transfer it across the equality sign, and the sign will change to subtraction. So let's quickly do that. Now, if you are transferring this plus b that we have here to this other end it will change to what minus b by implication it means this b has gone to this other end minus b you can leave your answer like this because our aim is for our soviet formula to stand alone and our x is already standing alone if you leave your answer like this you are still correct you are good to go or you can decide to solve for that minus b minus b Will give you minus 2b so if you decide to do that you are still correct so your minus b minus b will give you what minus 2b it is still the same our aim has been achieved for our subject formula to stand alone so we are good to go let's go to the third question question number three Awesome. So we can say this is solution 3. Great. Now, don't forget, we have to make x the subject of the formula and our aim is for our x to stand alone. Looking at this question, what is disturbing our x is in two forms. The first one is this a in multiplication form and the second one is this c in addition form. Because we actually want our x to stand alone. First thing first, we are going to apply the principle here in solution number two, and also the principle here in solution number one combined. 
But let's start with the principal year first in this solution number two. Because this is plus C. We have to transfer it across the equality sign out here if you think for minus C. Let's do that one first. If we transfer it out, if you change to what? Minus C. That means this C that we have here has gone out. That's the principle we apply in solution number two. Don't forget, if it is an addition or subtraction, you transfer and the sign will change. If it is a multiplication form, you divide. Now, our X is still not standing alone. We have AX now. So what is disturbing our X now is A, but in multiplication form. But before we do that, we now have AX equals B plus C minus C. So let's quickly do this first. Plus B plus C minus C can cancel out. Don't forget, our aim is for our X to stand alone. Depending on what you want to achieve, you can decide to leave this plus C minus C and focus your attention on making your X to stand alone. Or if you want to simplify further, we can deal with this plus C minus C. It will cancel out. So plus C minus C will cancel out. Let's quickly do that. This plus C and minus C will do what? We cancel out. Yeah, we can have have okay we can still remove them because they are having different sign plus c can cancel out minus c they are having different sign unlike what we have here minus b minus b is giving us minus 2b so plus c minus c will cancel out because they are having different sign so we are left with ax equals b Awesome. So with this, we can now get a template so that we we'll divide both sides by A so that our X can do what? Can stand alone. Let's get the template. Great. Now, on this left hand side, what we have is AX. And we are dividing both sides by B. Okay, for record purpose, let's put it down here. For record purpose, let's put it down here. Let's divide both sides by B. Let's just write it down. Divide both sides by B. Just for record purpose. Awesome. Now, you can now say because here we have AX, we are dividing by B, and on this side we have a. Sorry, we are dividing both sides by A, not B, because it is A that is disturbing our X. We are dividing both sides by A, not B. So we have B here. And divided by A. Awesome. So, because we have AX equals B, and we want to make our X to stand alone, so we divide both sides by A, like we've been doing. So, that our A can cancel out A in order for our X to stand alone. So, we can now say. Our x will now be b over a. Awesome. Our x is already standing alone. That's our aim for our x to stand alone. So let's go straight to the last question. We have b square equals u square plus 2ax. That's solution number four. Let's quickly put it down here. You can 
commencer sur le grand fort. Awesome. We have to make S the subject of the formula. Now, this looks similar. It looks similar to what we have in our question number three. Because what is disturbing this X? We have two of them. A in multiplication form, C in addition form. The same thing here. What is disturbing our S here? 2A in multiplication form, U squared in addition form. So we just follow the same principle to achieve our aim. First thing first, this U squared, let's transfer it out. Don't forget, is addition that is here. The moment we transfer it across the equality sign, it will change to what? Subtraction. So let's quickly do that first. Awesome. So this u square, you just bring it out here. It will change to subtraction. By so doing, it has gone from here. Great. Now, don't forget, we are making this s the subject of the formula so that our x can stand alone. Now, what is disturbing this x again? Is this 2a? And like we explained earlier on, that if it is the multiplication form, you do what? You divide both sides. So you divide it out. So we can now say, let's divide both sides. By what? By 2a. Great. Let's get the template. Awesome. By implication, it means we are dividing this left hand side by 2a. We are dividing this right hand by 2a so that our s can stand alone. So we have this here, and we are dividing by what? Don't forget, we are dividing both sides by 2a. We have our equality sign here, and on this right hand side, we have 2a, and don't forget, we are dividing by what? 2a. Awesome. Now, with this, these two can now cancel these two that we have here. This A can cancel this A that we have here. Great. By implication, it means our S is now what? Standing alone. That is our aim. For our S to do what? To stand alone. So we are left with V square minus U square over 2A. Great. So, our S is now standing alone. Very easy. So, please don't forget those three points that we stated earlier. Let me quickly repeat that again. Number one, our aim is for our subject formula to stand alone. So, by so, if what is disturbing your subject formula is in multiplication form, you divide it out. If what is disturbing your subject formula is in addition form, you transfer it across the equality sign. Then the sign will change to subtraction. If what is disturbing your subject formula is in subtraction form, you transfer it across the equality sign to change to addition. Very easy and straightforward. You can always pause, rewind this video for better clarification and understanding. And if you don't understand anything, kindly drop a comment with us. We will reply you as soon as possible. Kindly help us to like this page, this video. And subscribe to this YouTube channel, My Simple Mass. Don't forget to press the notification bell so that whenever we post a video, you can always get notification from us. We'll be updating different topics in mathematics. We'll solve different questions, a whole lot of questions. 
Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.